wait, Mitchell, am I, what am I seeing here? Oh, my teams went down. I see a message in the chat from you though. Oh, uh, uh, we are having a little boy in January. Congratulations, that's fantastic. I have uh, two girls now and one of them is very happy and the other one is saying that he's gonna become a girl, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When I had my boy twins, twins and I was pregnant, I was pregnant. Uh, and I found out it was a girl, they were like, no, mommy, we wanted a boy baby. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Eva was my baby when I started here, and she just turned five in June. And uh, she keeps telling, telling everyone, no, it'll be a girl, don't worry. Fantastic, fantastic. Sam, you let me know when you want me to start. It's 8.02, but I, I see that we've still got folks joining. Oh, good morning, Lexi. Everybody, our intern is on. Everybody wave to Lexi. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining us today, Lexi. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that's awesome. We love our interns at WIC, don't we, guys? <laughs> oh, and Molly's here and has a baby. Hi. Who is that? We don't get to see everybody in person, but it's great to see the babies on the video. So I'll answer for Molly. I don't know if her mic is working. Her uh, baby's name is Josephine. Well, hello, Josephine. Thanks for coming today. Ah. Sam, are you ready for me to get started? Do you think we have yes. folks here you want to get going? Okay. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Ginger Robert Scott. Uh, we want to welcome you. Uh, so some housekeeping before I really get going. Please put yourself on mute. Uh, you can always type something in the chat if, if you need to draw our attention to something or raise your hand. If you're having connectivity issues, shut your camera off. And also there's a call-in number uh, in the appointment if you're unable to access the meeting throughout your com through your computer. Uh, we do have breaks scheduled through the day, but please feel free to take breaks as you need them. These sessions are being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube page after the conference. Uh, if you can work with your supervisors to send in the attendance sheet so we can get you the appropriate CEUs, that would be great. Uh, if you aren't a WIC staff member uh, working for one of the local agencies and would like CEUs, please fill out the attendance sheet in the chat and send to Sam Blanchard and Terry Lebrec, and we will get you your CEUs. Uh, please enter your name, email address, and what program you're joining from into the chat box, and this will be used for backup for attendance and to send out materials after the presentations are complete. So first, really before we get too, too started, I would like to make a land acknowledgement. With great respect, Maine WIC would like to acknowledge that Maine WIC provides services on land that the Wabanaki, Abenaki, Abinakis, Arosuntaguk, Pequaquet, Narantosac, also known as the Kennebec, the Malisee, Micmac, Penobscot, Passamaquoddy, Wendake, Neonwent, Penacook and the Ocosio people inhabited before us and that merged in the New, Ang New England Algonquin group. We also wel welcome our partners at the Passamaquoddy, Pleasant Point and Indian Township to the conference as well. Thank you for attending. We have a great day uh, for you today, starting with Alicia Simpson from Peapod Nutrition, and she'll be with us for most of the day. I'd also like to say thank you to the New England Addiction Technology Transfer Center for sponsoring our mid-morning speaker, Michelle Pavilotta. That's on de-escalation. After lunch, we will have staff recognition and awards, and Sam will close with a nutrition education idea, which is really fun. I can't wait for you guys to see it. 
I'm also happy to allow, announce our 2022 Lunch and Learn series that will begin in January with Dr. Maureen Black joining us about nutrition and child development from the University of Maryland. February through July will be our trauma-informed adverse childhood experiences series, always the second Tuesday of the month. If you need more information on that, contact Sam. Uh, one more piece of exciting news. We are also in the process of adding Haitian Creole to the Wix Shopper app. So I'll let you know in weekly update when that is live. Thank you to the state staff who worked so hard to bring this conference. Thank you to Terry for everything you do to get this conference ready. Thanks to Tanya for paying for it all. Uh, a big welcome uh, to Molly Kopp, our VISTA volunteer focusing on promotion, and Carrie Louch, um, our new breastfeeding and outreach coordinator who joined us in July. A big welcome. We're so glad to have both you both on board. Uh, I'd also like to say a big thank you to the nutrition team, Sam, Kyle, and Kim and Bobby also on the help desk. Um, thanks for all that you do. Thanks to the vendor team, Anna and April Young. Uh, and then lastly, but not least, uh, our technology manager, April Richmond. Uh, I could not do this without all of you, and I just really am I'm grateful for um, your presence in my life and a big thank you to your service for the people of Maine. And then lastly, I'd like to welcome Jamie Cottonor, who's my supervisor. She's the Associate Director for Prevention for the Maine CDC. And now uh, I'd like to take a moment and welcome Director Shaw uh, of the Maine CDC to give our opening address. Dr. Great. Shaw. Great. Well, thank you so much, Ginger. Um, and good morning, everybody. Uh, we very much appreciate all of you taking some time out of your busy week. Uh, to meet with us and can come together and talk about where things stand. Uh, you know, Ginger, a year ago or so, I uh, was with everybody and we speculated about um, being able to get together in person next year, meaning today. Um, and I don't know if we were overly optimistic, naive, foolish, uh, and thinking that we would still be virtual, but here we are. Uh, but I think we've also learned our lessons about not speculating about next year. So. I'm so glad that we're all able to be together this year virtually. Let's see what next year brings. Um, the other thing I wanted to do right up at the top is Ginger was kind enough to thank so many people uh, who have made today's event come together. But I think it's important that we acknowledge and thank Ginger for uh, her work in bringing everyone together and making this happen. So Ginger, on behalf of, of all 100 folks who are here, as well as all of us at the Maine CDC, thank you for your continued leadership of the WIC program. We, we wouldn't be here without you, literally. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge and welcome many of our colleagues from FNS uh, who have joined us from across the Northeast and indeed from places even further. Um, Michelle, who's the Boston FNS branch chief, Janelle, who's the team lead, Tyreek, who's one of the program specialists, uh, Roseanne, Tessa, Sarah, Michelle and Megan, uh, all of whom from FNS have joined us. Uh, we'd like to thank you both for your time today, as well as to really acknowledge and commend your team uh, for fostering such a great working relationship with Maine CDC. So on behalf of all of us at Maine CDC, thank you very much. Uh, I also want to take a minute to recognize a particular WIC staff person from the Opportunity Alliance who's been with us for just a bit over a year, and that is Pauline Mumumba. I wanted to, Pauline, take a moment to recognize your extraordinary efforts and let you know how pleased we are to have you be a part of our WIC family. Uh, Pauline, are you are you on? If so, if, if you are open to it, uh, please turn on your camera so we can all, all see you and acknowledge you. If not, that's what we understand, though. But I wanted to make make sure Pauline was on this morning. So let me just check. If she's not on, it's because she's taking care of a participant. <laughs> I, I don't see her in the participant list, which is a okay because it's more important that I think all of us acknowledge and are aware of the extraordinary work that Pauline has been doing. Um, I, I wanted to just share very quickly a few kind words from one of her coworkers uh, that was sent in to us. Her coworker writes, and I'm quoting, I first met Pauline while working part-time at the Portland WIC office. 
we were experiencing an influx of individuals, asylum seekers, and we're trying to navigate how best to serve those families. Pauline was not working directly with WIC at this point, but was acting alongside as an interpreter. This person writes, I remember wishing that Pauline would be in, in the appointments with me because she had such grace and compassion for the families arriving. Clients picked up on this quickly. And as soon, as soon as word spread that she had joined the Portland WIC team as a nutrition counselor, there was no looking back. When the pandemic hit, we were all provided work cell phones. And I'm quite certain almost every family Pauline spoke with has had her number on speed dial. She was also thrown into learning spirit during the pandemic and adapted well to learning the quirks of the system while also navigating the new eWIC systems. I've always been amazed at her ability to speak Lingala or French during an appointment and document. The amount of focus this requires is beyond me and I'm continually amazed by her. She has helped guide staff on best practices to best serve in a culturally sensitive manner and has added so much joy to our team. Just when I thought speaking French, Lingala and English was impressive, Pauline told the team that she's going to start taking Portuguese lessons this summer. She continues to go above and beyond for our clients and deserves all of this recognition. So Pauline, I know that you may not be with us, but I wanted to make sure everyone here was aware of your extraordinary efforts on behalf of all of us at the Maine CDC. A, we're so pleased to have you be on the WIC team, and B, we thank you for all your extraordinary efforts. It doesn't just end with Pauline, though. This, this time uh, over throughout the pandemic has been extraordinarily difficult extraordinarily difficult for all of us uh, as providers, and of course, to say nothing of those whom we serve. And so I wanted to take a moment this morning to thank all of you for all the tremendous assistance that you have been providing to individuals and families across the state, across the region. Uh, we've all seen the fissures that COVID has exposed, and in no place do all of those come together than in the WIC program individuals who need support, they need assistance, food, and fundamentally, they need someone who knows that they're cared about. And so I wanna thank all of you for continuing to do the work that you've been doing. It was hard before, the pandemic has in many ways made it tenfold harder, but each of you has stayed with it because of the mission. I wanted to recognize that and thank you for all of that effort. I don't know how much longer the pandemic will go on, nor do I know what the world will look like after the pandemic, but I definitely know that the services that you provide to families in need, well, that need will not be going away. As I close, I wanted to also introduce one of our special guests today, uh, and that is um, Elizabeth Silberman. Elizabeth is the FNS Regional Administrator, who again, I am so thrilled and glad has, has been able to join us today. A bit more about Elizabeth. About Elizabeth. Uh, she was appointed administrator for the Northeast region of the US FDA's FNS service uh, on June 6th of this year. She brings a wealth of experience to the position with 28 years in a, in a variety of FNS national and regional office leadership positions. She's worked closely with her team to improve program administration, integrity, delivery, as well as enhancing customer service. Most recently, she was the National Deputy Associate Administrator for SNAP. And her experience also includes state systems, WIC, and financial management. Uh, she looks forward to representing FNS on all 15 nutrition programs, and in particular, and why we're so glad she's here, working directly with state agencies on innovations and effective program delivery. Elizabeth, we are so delighted uh, that you're able to join us today, uh, and we thank you for all the work that you've been doing. Let me turn things over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shaw. I really appreciate that warm welcome. Uh, so it, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. I, I truly appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all today. Uh, as as was mentioned, I'm I'm new to my role in the regional as regional administrator uh, for FNS in the Northeast region. And I really do appreciate these opportunities where I can speak directly with states 
and learn more about how your programs are operating and how you're making it uh, happen for the participants. So um, one of the key uh, keys to any program success is the people. Uh, I must say I've been learning more about Maine WIC and I'm impressed with your innovation, especially as we're all navigating our way through this pandemic. I know it's been very challenging and states have, have uh, been flexible and, and um, met the challenge and uh, we truly appreciate we truly appreciate that. Uh, I'll mention two examples of your innovations. Uh, the child health referral poster that now hangs in your clinics developed with the help of a VISTA volunteer. The use of the QR codes next to different program descriptions is an easy way for potential participants to access more information. And the other is the chat bot available on your website, which provides for response to questions 24 seven. Both are, are great examples of innovation and a way to provide equal access and improve customer service. The journey WIC participants take is facilitated by local agency, agency staff like yourselves, whose work while often unseen is essential for moms and babies. I would like to recognize Maine for an initiative they started earlier this year, uh, a, a text messaging um, uh, project to promote breastfeeding to pregnant participants and WIC moms up to six months postpartum. I'd also like to commend the Bangor office on earning a gold level USDA FNS breast, breastfeeding award of excellence in 2020. So um, I'll talk, a lot about partnerships. I think that is a critical component for WIC success and building upon the unique relationships staff have with participants, families, you receive access to crucial resources through WIC's connections with the community. Uh, families share important concerns impacting them, allowing agencies to ensure referrals are crafted to meet their specific needs. And the extensive collaboration between WIC and local partners really form the backbone of resources that support each community. I know that Maine WIC excels in its partnerships. Your state WIC director, Ginger Robert Scott, is part of the Commissioner Office's Child Health Leadership Group. Maine WIC is part of Maine Feeding Partners, which connects WIC with all the major food banks. And I know WIC is working with the Office of Child and Family Services to streamline custody paperwork for children who are in foster care, as well as children being reunited. And we heard that this really helped program efficiency by eliminating having to track down caseworkers for this information. Um, and that's really near and dear to my heart. I started as a child protective caseworker, so I appreciate those kinds of connections. Uh, WIC is regarded as one of the leading public health programs because of, because of its many strengths. Local, state, and federal staff provide training and guidance, collect data, and collaborate with other agencies, departments, and organizations so that every American family receives the individual support they want. WIC ensures at-risk families are supported from the time a pregnant woman enrolls until the children turns five you are building relationships that allow societal inequities to be addressed and equalized. WIC is, is one of the most powerful public health interventions available to reduce stark racial disparities in maternal and child health outcomes. USDA is committed to helping more WIC eligible families access program benefits, and we are committed to ensuring additional resources help reach all families who need the program as well as retain participants so that American moms and children receive the maximum health benefits that will strengthen our country and help to right the inequity scale. Increased and sustained participation will maximize the program's benefits for this particularly vulnerable po population and help America's youngest children get a healthy start. One important job that you all have in WIC is identifying cross eligible participants from other income based programs such as SNAP and Medicaid. 
I know Mainwick is collaborating with the commissioner's office to receive a comprehensive list from both programs and reach out to those active on SNAP and Medicaid who may not realize they are also eligible for WIC too. And this is commendable. And you are adding more language options to your WIC shopper app to translate the food list, recognizing that in some parts of Maine, like Portland and Lewiston, there's a lot of diversity and many WIC clients require language services. So I'd like to spend the rest of my time this morning giving you the giving you an overview of the agency's priorities uh, to the personal struggles so many Americans facing today as a result of COVID-19 health crisis. The approach is both about addressing immediate need and paving a path to an economic recovery that is more equitable and just for all Americans, regardless of their background. One thing is certain, the COVID-19 public health and cr economic crisis is bigger than any other we've seen in our lifetime. And the crisis of food insecurity is particularly urgent among communities of color who are disproportionately impacted by hunger. The most recent data shows one in six Black and Latino adults report not having enough food to eat compared to one in 16 white adults. Congress has passed several important relief bills that have helped the nation start to heal. However, more needs to be done to help the many Americans who are barely hanging on. And that starts with supporting families. From day one, ensuring that America's children get the nourishment they need despite the pandemic and long beyond it has been, has been a top priority for this administration. And one of the most important ways we're doing that is by maximizing the reach of WIC, and for good reason. The nutrition provided by this program is vital to the health and well being of low income mothers and their children, and ensuring they have the personalized nutrition resources and health care referrals they need. WIC has proven to have impact, positive impacts for the at risk women and children who, par who participate, which is clear when you stop to consider that WIC participants are more likely to have a more nutritious diet and better health outcomes. And there is strong evidence that WIC participation results in fewer infant deaths, fewer premature births, and increased birth weights, and reduces health care costs. However, nationally, WIC participation is still on the decline, even as hunger rates soared during the pandemic. And while participation increased slightly at the beginning of the pandemic. Participation for fiscal year 2021 has remained lower than previous years, despite the fact that the data shows as many as 14 million children have not always had enough nutritious food to eat during the pandemic. This is a, certainly a disappointing trend and we're committed to reaching more of those who are eligible for the program and connecting them with valuable benefits. Um, so one way that WIC Maine is innovating is your outreach and partnering with the Maine Department of Labor to add WIC Outreach to Labor's weekly newsletter and including WIC as a resource to the Department of Labor's website. Another great initiative is the Birth Empowerment Project, a series of multilingual videos aimed to educate health and social service providers and empower perinatal parents to utilize their voice and choice when navigating reproductive health care systems. I heard this project was funded by the Maine WIC Health Access Foundation, uh, but came about from conversations with folks from the Opportunity Alliance, including local Maine WIC staff. I challenge you to keep reaching out to those who can benefit from WIC and get them connected to program benefits I'd personally love to see every eligible woman and child participate in this wonderful program. And for our part, the administration is investing significant additional resources in the program. Uh, I think many of you know the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 included a historic investment in WIC and the WIC Farmers Market Nutrition Program, which USDA will use to improve program delivery and increase participation among eligible women and children. 
The Food and Nutrition Service is currently developing a plan for investing the $390 million allocated in the rescue plan through FY 2024, incorporating data-driven strategies and stakeholder feedback to in increase program reach. Um, this effort will include a robust national outreach campaign to ensure that eligible families know about the program's benefits and offer new and easy ways for them to enroll. It will also encourage innovation to improve service delivery, streamline benefit delivery, and increase use of benefits. The American Rescue Plan also provides $490 million to help WIC participants purchase healthy foods during this difficult time. Another great innovation project I'm hearing about in Maine is Maine's um, CBB at the Farmer's Market Project. This project will allow WIC clinics clients in Maine to use their cash value benefits to farmer's markets using a mobile application and barcode system to, create, to complete the transaction with the vendor. And this project really could have national impact on finding an e-solution for the use of CVB at farmer's markets. So we're very excited to see it roll out and see what it could mean for, uh, for farmer's markets and, and EBT. This, this plan is investing significant resources in WIC to help us address falling participation and help new moms, infants, and young children access WIC's healthy food and nutrition services. So um, our goal with this investment and the innovations that it will support is to invest in improvements in the program in order to help increase in the share of eligibles who participate that is important today, and that will continue to be a goal long after the COVID crisis is ended. We are also focused on tackling racial disparities that drive higher rates of food insecurity among African American and Latino communities who are three times as likely, and indigenous communities who are twice as likely to report that their households don't get enough to eat. In the history of this country, and the history of USDA, too many people who are black, indigenous, and people of color have faced discrimination, sometimes over and sometimes through institutionalized rules and policies. One of the more tragic ways that these system inequities manifest themselves is in mortality rates for infants born to black and indigenous women that are at least twice as high as for infants born to white women. They have also created conditions that result in inadequate health care and higher rates of overweight and obesity, asthma, severe asthma, childhood mortality, and overall poor health. This administration is focused on addressing these disparities, strengthening WIC, and introducing more eligible families to its benefits and services. It's a a proven way to drive better health for infants, more tr nutritious diets, and better health care for children, and higher academic achievement for students. We believe that connecting more eligible women and young children to WIC is one of the tools to reduce stark racial disparities in these area. Fortunately, thanks to the work many of you do, we have very strong foundation to work from. Work is powerful and a proven intervention. But there is a lot more work to be done, which is why we have asked for a significant new investment in the program. So, uh, Just to speak more specifically about the immigrant communities, one of the specific challenges that we'll need to work with you on is reaching eligible immigrant families. Some immigrant families are understandably concerned and confused about whether participation in federal nutrition programs impact their immigration status. They may also be worried that just showing up for service puts them at risk of engagement with law enforcement. We are committed to restoring trust and building policies that make sure everyone who is eligible to our nutrition programs receive them. The Department of Homeland Security is already reaching out to us and other federal agencies so that we can work together to establish clear and consistent policy as well as messaging. We want to speak with one strong and welcoming voice. 
moving forward, we will be proactive in advancing equity for all marginalized groups, people of color, immigrants, rural communities, through all of our FNS nutrition assistance programs. WIC has a long history of improving outcomes for children. We want eligible individuals of all backgrounds to enroll in WIC and stay on WIC to reap the benefits of this investment. We look forward for, for ways to remove barriers to program, program access and explore how we can make it easier for anyone who qualifies for federal nutrition assistance to get benefits. This applies to every program we administer, including WIC. So in closing, I, I want you to know that USDA is committed to working quickly to meet participants' needs and is counting on all of our partners, including every one of you, to help us do the same. Uh, we need your help to educate eligible women about the health benefits of entering and staying in this program, to identify the program challenges that we need to address, and to propose solutions based on your experience. We, we don't come to this issue with all the answers. Instead, I expect many of the answers are, are from you and, and your other state partners. Um, back to the clinics with WIC participants, keeping in mind the, the goals that I've shared today. WIC staff have always impressed me as having a deep sense of ownership and pride in this incredible program that you all run. I know that you are our strongest asset as we work together to connect more eligible families to an even stronger WIC program. Uh, time is of the essence to address the needs of struggling families, and we do not intend to rest until we know that we've done everything we can to ensure their needs are, are met. And um, I, I thank you for this opportunity to talk to you all today. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or maybe ask my team to pitch in if you had any specific questions for FNS. Thank you, Jen. And if not, Ginger, I can turn it back over to you. All right. I guess everybody's just raring to go get get nap Peapod right. Nutrition. So we're excited about Alicia's fine. talk. But thank <laughs> you very much, uh, Elizabeth, for joining us today and um, for giving us some of your time. We really appreciate it. And, um, you know, thank you for coming to the WIT conference. And also thank you, Director Shaw, uh, for opening with, Liz with Elizabeth and uh, joining us as well. Uh, so just a quick uh, look back on FY 2021. We saw the EWIC implement, implementation both at clinics in August of 2020 and then statewide with stores June 21st, 2021. So we are now fully EWIC implemented. Uh, FY 2022 is going to bring us the chat box, ch chatbot to our website, uh, main.gov slash WIC. Two-way texting with participants will also begin in October this, this very month. Uh, CVB at Farmer's Market, as you heard, is coming out soon, and we're very excited uh, to uh, roll this program out and bring our farmers back in. Um, and then FMMP will be electronic next season. So we have a lot going on at WIC. Uh, training and guidance will be released soon. Uh, the new breastfeeding curriculum is also coming out in the spring. So busy people, we acknowledge that, we know that, we thank you uh, for all the work that you do. Uh, a big thank you for Sam for all that she has done to pull this conference together today. Uh, we're going to have a great day. Uh, you should have a package from the State WIC office and we're hoping that you guys like like that. Uh, a little feedback if, if you do like it, I'd love to know. Thanks for all you do. Thank you for ter Terry and the rest of the state staff for sending uh, those packages out. Now I want to turn it over to Sam Blanchard, our nutrition coordinator. Uh, Sam, take it away. Good morning. So I'm very excited to introduce to you all Alicia Simpson. Alicia is the founder and executive director of Peapod Nutrition and Lactation, a 501c3 nonprofit organization providing preventative health care to over 1,000 low-income and underserved families in, in Georgia. Free services are provided through Peapod's Healthy Families Program, made possible through the support of foundations and generosity of individual donors. 
as a registered dietitian, international board certified lactation consultant and feeding therapist, Alicia's organizations are fueled by her passion for public health and nutrition throughout the human life cycle and empowering families through evidence-based nutrition, lactation education, counseling, and support to reduce the risk and prevalence of lifestyle-related chronic diseases in families. The only practicing registered dietitian in Georgia who is also, a cert who is also certified as a feeding therapist for children with sensory processing disorders and related conditions, Alicia's expertise brings a unique perspective to, change to changing resistant eating behaviors along with long-term social patterns connected with this behavior. In addition to her work at Peapod Nutrition, Alicia is a clinical and curriculum coordinator for the Maternal and Child Health and Wellness Department at Union Institute and University, where she works to cultivate the next generation of IBCLCs. Alicia is also the best-selling author of four books, including her latest, her latest book titled, Boost Your Breast Milk, an all-in-one guide for nursing mothers to build, to build a healthy milk supply, and a contributing author to the core curriculum for lactation consultant practice in the sixth edition of the Breastfeeding and Human Lactation. Alicia has a bachelor's degree in marketing from Hampton University and a master's degree in health sciences with a concentration in nutrition from Georgia State University. While earning her master's degree, she simultaneously earned a second bachelor's degree in anthropology, also from Georgia State University. Alicia is a graduate from the Satcher Health Leadership Institute at Morehouse School of Medicine. Her most, re most rewarding role to date is that of mother to her vibrant and energetic eight-year-old daughter. Alicia lives in Atlanta. And Alicia, we are so excited to have you here today. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to you and you can start your presentation. Thank you so much, Samantha. I have been looking forward to this day for it feels like a year now. <laughs> um, so sad I can't actually be in Maine. I was also looking forward to like my fall Maine experience, <laughs> but I'll take it. You know, we're, we're, I'm here in Georgia. We're enjoying our, our Georgia fall, which is like a mix of 60s in the morning and 90s in the evening. So that's just a really nice fall here in Georgia. I'm going apple picking this weekend in our shorts and our tank tops. Totally normal. I'm sure that's exactly how it is in Maine right now. So <laughs> I always laugh when we post our, our apple picking pictures that I'm like, we're sweating. <laughs> so uh, I don't think that's what the rest of the country is doing when they're picking apples. Uh, well, I'm so excited um, to be with all of you today. Um, we're going to be together for a few hours this morning and then an hour again this afternoon. Um, so I want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, and so I will be calling on you to talk, to uh, jump in the chat um, throughout the presentation. So let me just share my screen here. I'm new to sharing screens in Teams, so I hope I'm doing this right. It looks like it's mad at me. Let's see. Open share tray. I have a feeling you cannot share my see my screen yet. No. Not okay. yet. If you do the screen, it allows you to share everything. I think it's a little easier than doing just the window. Okay. Let's see here. So sorry for the tech difficulties. We went over this in tech and everything and still, <laughs> let's see. It's not your fault. Mercury is retrograde. We should That's expect it. electronic things. That's <laughs> it. Right yes. yes, let's see. It's telling me to open up my tray and it doesn't want to let me share. Okay, let me see if I can pull. Could it be my permissions because I'm on as a guest? No, I haven't. Been, I haven't set so that everybody should be able to share their screens. I will just double check though. Sorry about Thank that, everybody. With us. Isn't this the most exciting part of any 
online interaction when someone's trying to share their screen. <laughs> so this is always my favorite part. Let's see here. Close this out. All right, let me see if I can give one more option. It just doesn't seem to want to let me share. Okay, I just updated the prep. I like undid it and then redid it. So why don't you give that a shot? Okay. And it's just the open share tray button, correct? Yep, it should be the little arrow up to the left of the leave button. So sorry, everyone. Let's see. That's okay, here. Sam. I have it up. Do you want me to try to? It's yeah. changed just a little bit from what I oh, sent okay. yesterday. I wonder if I like share my screen and then there should be a button that says request control and then I wonder if you can do it that way. Yeah, let's try that. Right. <laughs> we'll give it a shot. Yeah, I just keep pressing open share and it's just like it doesn't want to do it. <laughs> okay, can you see that? Yes. Google Slides. Mm. Okay, so allow. And so we actually want to open with the other presentation first. So, Oops, I'm sorry. yeah. Oh, well, I added a new slide, but we'll just pretend that new slide is there. <laughs> so, oh, sorry about that. That's okay. By the next time, we'll have it. It worked in practice. It but did. It's only because we're like live. <laughs> Everything works in practice and it comes along just lovely. And then that, yeah. Um, there we go. Okay. Now, I wonder if you do open with, if it will open, let you open it just with. Um, hmm. Let's see. Yeah, let me see if I can. Would it be super disruptive if I logged out and logged back in to see if I can change no. controls that way? Let's let's give that a shot. Okay. Thank you for everyone for bearing with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I apologize, everybody. I'm gonna stop recording and then when she gets back in, we'll start recording again.